as I think about the next four to eight years in, in, uh, in downtown Knoxville, the things that really come to mind that we need to focus on are continuing to develop, uh, to develop and invest in things like infrastructure, uh, to improve services and, and amenities, you know, from, from grocery stores to parking, uh, mixed use, you know, retail and condos, uh, and apartments, uh, pharmacies, things like this that are happening, uh, that are happening today and we just need to keep improving on those to make sure that downtown Knoxville is livable. You know, we've had a boom in, in, um, in the amount of people living downtown and we've got to continue uh, on that trend. Number three, uh, we need to work to develop the, the first ring communities to, to finish the vision that, that Bill Haslam uh, really laid out for Knoxville. We have a lot of, of planned projects. Let's look to invest in those and, and see those to fruition. And then uh, number four, and uh, just the last one, uh, not, not because it is the last, but, but the last one that I definitely want to focus on, is growing our arts and cultural scene. It's so important. Knoxville is really the arts and cultural center uh, of, of our region, um, of this entire area. And so we need to continue to develop that. And you know, right across the street from, our, from uh, my office is the Arts and Cultural Alliance, and, and they do a great job. And you know, the return to our community on, on that investment that we make as a city but as a community is just immense and, and part of why Knoxville is, is going to continue to grow and, and, um, and be the heartbeat of East Tennessee. Um, downtown Knoxville being vibrant and growing is, is going to grow our whole area. I, I've said many times if, if we're thinking of Knoxville and economic development or, or anything like that singularly then we're thinking the wrong thing. We've got to think regionally uh, when we think about this area and, and Knoxville helps attract businesses to the surrounding area. It helps uh, you know, bring a, a vibrant cultural and art scene to, to all of the surrounding area. And, and that's why a, a strong downtown is you know, necessary. I, I moved my office downtown because my employees wanted to be around a, a vibrant you know, city core and, and see people and walk over to Market Square and be down here when festivals happen. So uh, I think those are the same reasons that everyone wants to, to see a vibrant downtown. You know, when you're looking to grow, grow off of the successes that you've already had. And we've had so many successes downtown. That's why now we need to take what we've done in the core in Market Square and doing on Gay Street and some of the others and expand that out to, to some of the corridors. You know, whether we're talking about Chapman Highway or Magnolia or, or Cumberland Avenue or North Central like we've done, those are the next steps to, to build that and to include our communities because we're, we're never going to really have the kind of city that we want if, if those first ring neighborhoods aren't included in the city. They, you know, they've got to be connected by bike lanes and sidewalks and, and greenways to downtown, uh, and that includes South Knoxville. You know, that's why I'm so excited about downtown because of the opportunities. We have over $300 million in planned projects uh, downtown Knoxville from South Knox Waterfront to the Magnolia Corridor, uh, I-275, uh, you know, North Central and things that are going on there. There's, there's just so much that Chapman Highway, there's so many things that we've, we've put plans together for. Now we need somebody that can execute those plans, the plans that Bill has them started, somebody that can finish you know, the, the plans that he laid out there. And, and I've made the argument many times that it's going to take somebody that understands business, that can go out there and, and sit across the table from a CEO that's saying, well, maybe I'm going to move my business to Knoxville. I'm looking at two or three other places. Why Knoxville? And I think it takes somebody that can sit across that table and say, well, I actually have a small business in Knoxville. You know, my business is downtown Knoxville. This is why Knoxville is a great place to move a business, right. start a business, grow a business. Sure, we'll talk about quality of life, and, and that's something I talk about with making Knoxville the most walkable, bikeable, runnable city in the southeast. But we've also got to be able to talk business and why it's a great business climate and make sure it is a great business climate. Our architecture, you know, the buildings, the look and feel of downtown draws in tourists, it draws in businesses. You know, I, I love having my offices uh, in a building right here on the 100 block of Gay Street. Um, it has a great feel to it, it has a great history to it. And so I think for economic purposes, I think for, you know, um, making sure that we're preserving our, our heritage and our history in Knoxville and telling the story of Knoxville for tourism, for so many reasons, uh, we should look to preserve anything that we can downtown. I've heard from my opponent too many times, let's add another layer of government. And I just, I just don't support that. Whether, whether it's red light cameras or parking authorities or business liaisons or the 10-year plan, you know, it's, it's just one more layer of government on top of things. Let's fix the layer that's broken. Let's not take a broken layer and put one more layer on top. 
Uh, here's my thoughts about parking in downtown Knoxville. Number one, <clears throat> we have a, a decent amount of parking. Let's make sure people are educated about where the parking is. Let's make sure that we have affordable parking. You know that that um, that that it is reasonable because a lot of businesses choose. You have to take into account your lease for space and the parking um, of your employees, and so. We do need to make sure we have a good amount of affordable parking. I think those are two areas. Now, we're adding, I think, some levels to the State Street garage, and, and I think that's part of it is making sure we do have enough parking. Uh, so those three areas, making sure we have enough, making sure we're educated about what we do have, because we, I think the perception is out there that there's less parking than what there really is. I see you know, the city took it from a free lot and then started charging. I think it's either 40 or $45 a month now. And, not that that's expensive parking, but, but here's the point. And this is what I say about, you know, sometimes government or people that run these offices in government, with all the best intentions in the world, um, they've never created a job. They've never been in business for themselves. They've never worried about uh, foot traffic for their job. And, and so with all the best intentions, they get it wrong. They make these what they see as little decisions that affect um, dozens of businesses and, and I would what I mean by that is this when it was free parking you know TVA employees that are just a block and a half away that lot would be filled up with with several hundred cars every day that's hundreds and hundreds of people uh, with foot traffic every morning that might drop by and grab a cup of coffee or breakfast you know that might that might in the evening come home and get something and whether it's Harry's over here or or Slam Dot, or the Arts and Cultural Alliance, or you know, Eleven up the up the street. That, that's you know, it, all of these businesses require foot traffic. You know, there there's some businesses talking about going in there. If we were to add six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand uh, people a day extra walking by this area, that's the difference between making it and not making it. And the, the city didn't do this on on purpose. They didn't try to put these businesses out or kill foot traffic. But at $40 a month for eight or ten cars that pay that, it's not worth the trade-off. You know, and so, so for someone who's never been in business, they don't understand that that foot traffic is life or death for that business, you know, staying here. And, and to me, the property taxes that are paid here, the gross receipts, the jobs that these businesses can create, that's worth more than the ten cars that pay $40 a month to park down here. 